Hello, everyone. Welcome to Flow Academy. I'm Kimi. Today, we will begin our journey of AP Physics C mechanics. In the in this video, I will introduce you to very important concepts. They are scalars and vectors. In your daily life, you may hear the things like temperatures, mass, height, and so forth. When you describe those things, you may use, for instance, like 50 kilograms, 40 meters, or so forth. And these quantities, we call them scalars. So a scalar is the thing that only has magnitude or a say numerical value. So scalar is the thing that only has magnitude. As for vector, there is a very more special. A vector has both magnitude, magnitude, and a direction. Generally, we use an arrow to represent the vector, like this is a vector, maybe a. Notice that we use a little arrow that is superscribed above the character A to represent a, a vector. Well, you will meet a lot of vectors in your later study of physics. Now, you must be very familiar with the calculation of scalars, like maybe 1 plus 1 equals to 2, or 2 times 4 equals to 8. However, what about vector? Do you understand the vector's addition, subtraction, or multiplication? Well, now I will tell you the addition and subtraction of vector here. As for multiplication, you don't need to master it right now, and there is no corresponding division of vectors. As for addition, well, imagine there are two vectors, vector A and vector B. So what is the result of vector A plus vector B? Well, actually, this is very easy. The only thing you need to do is just simply shift the vector b from here to here. So I will draw it right here. So this is the original vector a. And if we shift the vector b from here to here, we get this. Notice that we need to connect the t tail of vector b to the tip of vector a, like this. And as the final result, we just simply connect the tail of vector A to the tip of vector B. So we get this final arrow, the final vector C. So the vector C is the result of vector A plus, oh, sorry, sorry, plus vector B. So vector A plus vector B equals to vector C. This method is called tip to tail rule so what about subtraction so let's draw two vectors maybe vector a and maybe vector b what is the result of vector a minus vector b so you may notice that minus vector b actually equals to plus negative sorry negative vector b so plus and what is my negative vector b actually this is very easy the only thing you need to do is just reverse the direction of vector b without changing its length or with same magnitude so what we need to do is just simply reverse the direction and we get maybe sorry maybe this is negative vector b and now it is very easy the only thing we need to do is just plus vector a to plus negative vector b 
and we get maybe here sorry I make a mistake we need to shift the vector negative B to here and we get this so the result is vector C here well you may wonder that if there is more numerical analysis of the addition or subtraction of vectors the answer is yes we can use the concept of component to help us answer the question what is a component well you may notice that in scalar there is a representation called numerical line maybe here is the orange of point zero this is minus one this is plus one plus two and so if we want to represent 1.4 this numerical in this numerical line we not only need to find the point here and this is the 1.4 similarly for vectors there is some um, similar representation we we can simply draw a coordinate system maybe here this is x-axis and y-axis well you may notice that in some representation we can use a 3d coordinate system that is we can add a z-axis but here we can only use 2d coordinate system so if we want to represent a vector a maybe here vector a in this coordinate system the only thing we need to do is just simply shift the tail to the original point here and we represent the vector a maybe like this vector a and here we need to do a simple trick that is we find the projection of the vector a in along two axes I mean, we can find this point, the tip of vector A, and draw a perpendicular line to two axes. This is, so we got two new vectors, maybe vector AX and vector AY. These two vectors are called the component of vector A. Here we can do the addition of vectors. Well, the result is very easy. We only need to just add up the components along each axis and find it, uh, and construct the final result. I mean, for instance, like we have a coordinate system x axis y axis, and we have two vectors, maybe vector a here and vector. Um, vector b here the only what is the result of vector a and vector plus vector b well the only thing you need to do is first to find the component of each vectors this is the two components of vector a and this is the components of vector b then we just add up each components along each axis i mean for instance in y axis we add up these two components and they just counteract with each other and we have maybe the result is like this components and along the x axis the two components add up and maybe we get the final result here and these new two new components or two new vectors is the components of the final result vector so we just construct result vector maybe here so this this vector c is the result of vector a plus vector b here i will introduce you a new concept called unit vector in coordinate system maybe we can construct a 3d coordinate system 
This is x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. A unit vector is the vector that only has magnitude one and has different direction. And there are three very special unit vectors. They are called unit vector i, j, and k. Well, the unit vector i is the unit vector along x-axis. Similarly, j is along y-axis, and k is along z-axis. Notice that their magnitude only equals to one. So this is i, j, and k. We can use the concept of unit vector to help us do calculation. Of addition of vectors. It is very easy. For instance, oh, at first I need to tell you how to represent a vector using unit vector. For instance, we have a vector a here. Well, we can do resolving, resolve the vector a to its components, maybe a x and a y. Notice that a x and a y are along x axis and y axis, and they have different magnitude. So we also notice that unit vector is along each axis and has magnitude one. So as a result, we can represent vector a using unit vector. For instance, imagine that a x has magnitude of three and a y has magnitude of 2. So vector a can be represented as 3i plus 2j. So this is how to use the unit vector to represent a vector. Here we can do the addition, maybe vector a equals to 3i plus 2j and maybe vector b equals to 4i minus 3j. Notice that minus means along the negative axis. I mean, let me draw vector b here. So this is vector b. So the result of vector a plus vector b equals to 3 plus 4i plus 2 minus 3j. So the result is 7i minus 1j. So this is how the concept of unit vector helps us do the addition of vector. So this is probably the end of this episode. I hope you master the concept of scalar and vector. If you like my video, please leave a like and subscribe me to follow me. And Flow Academy has videos for other interesting AP subjects.